Hello and welcome to my review of the Basilisk or Medusa tank for Solar Auxilia for Warhammer the Horus Heresy from Games Workshop. One of these models will cost you £42.50 and consists of 187 plastic components. Uh, to put that into perspective a little bit, a typical Lehman Ross strike tank uh, consists of 163 components. So you're getting a fair few more components uh, with this kit than a normal uh, Lehman Ross. And you're getting over 30 more components than a Dracosan Armoured Transport, which is actually about £15 more expensive. We're getting a fair few parts with this one. The format of this review is as usual. I'll take a close look at the model. I'll have a look at all the detail and things, tell you how easy it was to build. Then we'll look at the spare part. We'll go through some size comparisons, and I do actually have a Solar Auxilia Rifleman that I can um, give you a size comparison with this time, as well as some other Horus Heresy uh, miniatures. Then, at the end of the review, I will go through all of the rules found in the Liber Imperium army book. So, first things first then, uh, let's have a look at the model. Here it is. It's a nice tank, nice artillery piece uh, for Solar Auxilia. Of course, it's uh, not a kind of space marine vehicle uh, that you're kind of used to on this channel, uh, but it's a decent size. It's probably about the size that I was expecting um, for the Basilisk. I do like how there's an armoured top to it, or an armoured canopy. The loader and the gunner are all, uh, you know, protected under that armoured canopy. Um, it's all sealed as well. Um, I think that's really cool. These are Lehman Ross uh, tracks. I mean, they look exactly the same. Uh, so it's that kind of chassis, but, uh, you know, all this front part is... I say new, this top canopy is new, the um, loading bay uh, and the uh, barrel of the gun and things are all new, this back door is new. I think the exhausts are the same, um, but this, I want to say exhaust air filtration type of system thing is, is new, I think. I certainly haven't seen it on uh, a Lehman Ross, maybe it's on the uh, Dracosan. But uh, yeah, very nice looking tank. Whichever uh, configuration you go for, whether you build it as the Basilisk or the Medusa, I am actually tempted um, to get a second one just to give it a bit of company and have uh, two sort of artillery cannons um, and maybe just pick up a Medusa at some point. Um, the turret itself uh, can be moved up and down and also sort of like in a, in a transport position, um, which is very, very cool. Uh, I actually prefer this sort of turret mechanism thing um, compared to the Lehman Russ and the uh, Malkador, which uh, are very loose um, compared to this. This is very solid. Um, it stays exactly where you put it. You've got plenty of trajectory options uh, available, and I dare say that would be the same uh, for the uh, Medusa. Uh, one thing I'll also say though is it's kind of kind of possible uh, to um, swap and magnetize uh, it with the uh, Medusa cannon, the bombard. Um, all you need to do is, is this thing does actually glue onto the base of the shaft, um, but the cannon barrel itself that just slots in in there. Um, but you could magnetize that onto it uh, if if you wanted. In the instructions, it's a bit odd. It says, do not glue um, this bit, but if you don't glue that bit, the whole thing kind of falls off it. Um, but yeah, you can magnetize this barrel bit and have it as both. Uh, this part here is different though for the Basilisk and Medusa, so that might impact whether you can rest the, the gun, but if you don't mind that, um, and it's more of an aesthetic thing and you, you want that op those options, um, it is possible. Uh, one thing I'll say is I really like the, the back door um, ramp thing you know lots of armor in there isn't it very very thick um quite possibly maybe that's a weak point of the tank and in there i don't know if you can see we've got some uh auxilia in there loading um the cannon and what i've done um up to you if you want to do this i, I would glue this part on um because it's a bit tricky to um slip it on and off uh but this back hatch you can actually leave off um it, it's goes on there i mean 
it, it is loose, but uh, again, what I've done is I've actually glued those Sorrel Auxilia in there. Yeah, w whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, I've glued them in there. Going to be an absolute pain to paint them if I am going to. Probably going to put some very light detail in there. Um, but it's a very nice tank if you want to, um, you know, have this part not glued. As I say, it's tricky to put it in and out you know, under that barrel of the gun. But if you wanted to spray that and paint the uh, auxilia, it's a very, very nice kit to give you that, you know, th that internal compartment um, detail. Uh, hopefully you can you can see all that, guys, but there's lots of detail in there with the shells, loading, pressing on the lenses and the firing. Um, there's an empty um, sort of casing there, which has this uh, exit, mechanism which is also represented on the outside they didn't have to do that but they did and um, so that just ejects the, um, the spent uh, casing the spent shell casing and um, keeps it all sealed up which is very very nice uh, i like that attention to detail uh, you can have the um, base of the the gun where you would load the shell uh, you can have that um, not glued i've glued it um, I don't see any point in, in, in not, not gluing it if you don't want to. Um, but yeah, you don't have to glue this bit, is what I'm saying, so you can have access to some of the detail there. It might appeal to a few of you that want to have, you know, some extra detail and things in, in this tank. I think it's very, very cool because if you were to just look at the tank normally, just like that, you'd think, all right, yeah, it's a solar auxilia tank. Um, you know, it's what we've seen before. It's, you know, got enough detail on the... Uh, outside and things but you know when you when you look a bit closer you can see all of that that's very very cool and for, for games and things you might want to leave that off uh, or even dare I say it if you were going to have it as like an exhibition piece to um, showcase your painting skills you could put a, a piece of um, clear plastic card over there to give you like a an x-ray view of uh, the internal um, compartment there very very cool I like that so there's no real difficulties in building this kit at all. The Lehman Rust tracks go on very well. The cannon and the fire mechanism and all these parts go on very nicely. Um, it's a fun kit and it doesn't take you as long as you probably might think um, to put together. Anyway, let's have a look at these spare parts then. Uh, so we have the um, almost as legendary as the Space Marine um, vehicle accessory sprue. This one right here, the Solar Auxilia one, I didn't use anything maybe the smoke launchers are used but you can you can put a, a hunter killer missile on the side to to break it up a bit for, for me it looks a bit odd having an artillery piece with a big old missile on the side but you know um, you can do that because i think they do have unlimited range um again you could put the the dozer blade on there uh, if you really wanted to, uh, you could put the pintle mounted weapons on. Um, it really is up to you. I've left mine very kind of basic. I, I want another one that's going to be very basic too. Maybe I would add some things on the Medusa, like the Dozer Blade, because you know the, the cannon is much, much shorter range, isn't it? Um, but yeah, you've got that vehicle accessory sprue. And then you've also got uh, these. So this is the uh, sort of Medusa cannon. Um, so that gives you an idea of you know, it's a it's a thicker cannon, um, but a a shorter one. So shells are are thicker, um, more girthy uh, for this Medusa cannon. So, yep, you can have that one. Uh, we've got these uh, sort of trench runs runs or skis, as they're called. Um, you've got the the shells for the Medusa. Got a couple of heads, uh, different head options for the Sora Auxilia and yeah that's about it um so not many spare parts for this specific kit itself but then you've got the vehicle accessories okay so on to the size comparisons then uh let's uh, go through the comparisons with the lehman russ first of all uh right here okay, so as you can see uh size wise you know the same chassis in a way um for the lehman russ you know same same tracks uh it's just a bit wider it's definitely a, a bigger tank um it's probably like half a track wider so not massively wider um and length lengthwise it is longer um you know the the back of the chassis does go out 
further and um, you know you, you don't have these skis and um, which kind of you know make the Lehman Ross look a bit longer um, but in terms of you know the the height as well it is a bit lower because it doesn't have that turret on the top um, but it's classic uh, uh, artillery piece um, you know it's it's low enough and it's got that trajectory as well uh, I, I would have preferred the trajectory to be more of an angle I would say that that is about a 45 degree angle um, I would have preferred it at 60 or even at a push 70 degrees um, there's definitely sort of room there for it to to go sort of at a higher more obtuse angle um, but it kind of stops at about 45 uh, which it does put a dent on uh, the believability of this weapon having a 240 inch range it's got one of the one of the longest range um, weapons in the whole game and, and law in a way um, you know for a standalone tank artillery piece um, so yeah uh, I, I would have preferred a a 60 or maybe 70 degree uh, fire and angle but yeah um, they haven't done that in this in a way the Lehman Ross um, has a similar uh, firing angle um, than the artillery cannon which is just yeah I, I understand that they have to you know make some decisions when they're um, designing this uh, you know how it's going to build uh, and all the rest of it but even if they forgave the um you know option to um lay the cannon down if they had to forgive forgive that or even it's po i say posability there's not much posability up to the 40 degree angle um you know for you to need to if you had it at a 60 70 degree angle for it to be glued instead i, I would have preferred that i would have preferred a, a higher angle but you know that's my my i really really am nitpicking here uh with that but anyway that's the size comparison next to lehman ross it's shorter but wider and longer compared to the malkador heavy tank uh which is taller than the uh lehman ross uh, only just but uh, but it's thinner of course it means it will be thinner than the um basilisk which it is um but it is a fair bit longer um could you actually fit uh, maybe it is a lehman ross and it's almost a lehman ross and a half um size that malkador but yeah that uh, gives you an idea I'm, I'm building up a nice little tank force at the moment I've, I've yet to build another lehman ross and some sentinels and things but uh, i am enjoying this uh, kind of tank heavy uh, army and then finally for size comparisons uh, i do actually have a solar auxilia that's been sprayed um which is quite bizarre but uh yeah um that's where it stands next to um, the troops quite quite believable if anything i'll probably want the tank to be a bit bigger these solar auxilia are um are well proportioned um put it that way um and uh if i just give you a comparison with the the usual 40k mini so we have slime marbo a primaris and a standard space marine i mean you know bear in mind this is 140,000 space marine so yeah their space marine there is not even up to the tracks the primaris again not even up to the tracks slime marbo is compared to uh, some space marines which you know probably all of you collect maybe um yes you we've got uh, mark four which does look pretty small next to the basilisk we've got the new mark three and mark an old mark three and then we've got the mark six as well so gives you an idea where the tank um, stands I mean if you've got 10 of these space marines outside that tank it's gonna definitely make the tank look a bit small um, but you know 10 solar auxilia is gonna work they're gonna look right at home outside that tank and this is my part of the review where I will go through all of the rules for the basilisk for the solar auxilia uh, as I said at the start you'll find its rules in the forces of the Emperor army book and the rules for the basilisk and Medusa uh, are on one data sheet uh, under heavy support and uh, they're classed as a solar auxiliar armored battery um, and it will cost you 200 points. The stat line reads as follows, uh, the movement is 10 inches, ballistic skill 4, 
which is very good. Uh, front arm is 13, side is 12, rear is 10, and hull points is four. Super, how does that compare to a Lehman Ross? Um, well, if we just compare it to a Lehman Ross strike tank, um, the strike tank is, of course, uh, faster. It's at 12 inches. The assault Lehman Ross is 10 inches, but the ballistic skill of a Lehman Ross strike tank is only three. Um, but the Lehman Ross does have that better front armor and side armor at 14 and 13, respectively. But it has the same armor of 10 and the same number of hull points. So I've built mine as a basilisk, um, which, which means it comes equipped with a centerline mounted Earthshaker cannon, searchlights, smoke launchers. All models in the armoured battery may exchange their centerline mounted Earthshaker uh, cannon for one centerline mounted Medusa mortar for free. That's all models. So I read that as if you've got an armoured battery of you know two or three of them um they're gonna have to have you know the same weapon speaking of which uh you can include up to two additional auxilia basilisks for 200 points each so there's no benefit in having multiples of them in one heavy support choice other than you can have three of them in one uh you know in, in terms of like you're not getting a discount in points any model in the auxilia armored battery may take one of the following a pintle mounted Multi-laser at 10 points, a pintle mounted heavy stubber at 5 points, pintle mounted heavy flamer at 5 points. Any model in the auxilia armoured battery may take any of the following, a dozer blade for 5 points and one hull mounted hunter killer missile for 10 points. Now the main reason you're going to be spending these 200 points um, other than the ballistic skill 4 and the, the, the kind of decent armour is for their main weapon. So in this case this one's equipped with the Earthshaker cannon. It is one of the longest ranged uh, weapons in any of the arsenals. I think I mentioned earlier that Hunter Killer Missile was probably like unlimited range. I think that's the old rules coming through in my head, um, but the Hunter Killer Missile is only 48 inch range. Yeah, you're not gonna find longer ranged weapons unless you start looking in the uh, Omnissiah book at some of the Titan weapons, specifically the Quake Cannon and the missile launchers. But uh, this uh, Shaker Cannon, it's a range of 240 inches, so it's going to be able to hit pretty much anything on any of the board sizes you, that you're going to play on. Uh, it's a strength of 9, which is very solid, AP is 4, Ordnance 1, Barrage, la Large Blast 5 inch, Shred and Pinning. Now, it's a bit disappointing that it's only armour penetration of 4. I would have liked it to be arm penetration of three, uh, and that goes the same for the Medusa mortar, just because it would be able to delete, you know, big chunks out of Space Marine forces. Um, but as it stands, it means that Space Marines can, you know, survive direct uh, artillery cannon shells from 240 inches away. Um, I think it used to be AP3, but uh, yeah. It being AP4 kind of reduces its effectiveness. Uh, it's a nice strength nine though. Now, the other weapon you can equip it with is a Medusa mortar, uh, which is a range 36 inches, strength nine, AP4. So it's exactly the same strength and AP as the Earthshaker cannon. Um, it's Ordnance one, barrage, large blast, five inches, pinning, but it does have rending six plus, but it is only rending six plus. Um, so that's the main difference. I don't think it's worth the trade-off um, for, for a much shorter range because, you know, you're then in range of like last cannons and things that are um, 46, you're in range of plasma, um, you're almost in range of some melter weapons. So I don't think the trade-off is there. I, I think for the basilisk, um, you know, to sit it as far back as possible or have two of them just firing away um, to try and take out vehicles and, and other units with the five inch blasts um, would probably be my, um, my strategy with them. How you would uh, deal with this is flanking mainly, um, so try and uh, take out that slightly softer side armor of 12. Um, definitely they're vulnerable from the rear. Um, if you're able to flank or deep strike or whatever from, from the rear, that's good. And also assault, you know, you get a contempt of Dreadnought into this thing, um, or even some space mints with a power fist. Um, you know, those four hull points can slowly be um, taken, taken out. Even las cannons from the side um, would do some decent damage. 
but it depends just how much you think that um, Strength 9 AP4 um, cannon is a danger to your other units. I really like the Basilisk. I've been meaning to get one for quite some time. It's one of the, the kits that I was most looking forward to, uh, as well as the, the Malkador um, in you know, for Solar Auxilia. I like that it's all enclosed. I like how the um, cannon itself um, you can you can pose other than, you know, the, the actual angle uh, of it. But like a lot of Warhammer miniatures, it has motivated me even more to build up some basilisks just for uh, Space Marines. What do you guys think of the Basilisk and Medusa for Solar Auxilia? Please do put your thoughts and opinions down below. It'd be good to hear from you. Thank you for watching, The Emperor Protects.